Section four of The Oresteia. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Oresteia by Aeschylus. Translated by E. D. A. Moreshead. Section four. The Libation Bearers. Part two. Many and marvellous the things of fear Earth's breast doth bear, And the seas lap with many monsters teems, And windy levin bolts and meteor gleams Breed many deadly things, unknown and flying forms, With fear upon their wings, and in their tread is death, And rushing whirlwinds, of whose blasting breath man's tongue can tell. But who can tell aright the fiercer thing, the aweless soul within a man's breast inhabiting? Who tell how, passion fraught and love distraught, the woman's eager, craving thought doth wed mankind to woe and ruin fell? Ye, how the loveless love that doth possess the woman, even as the lioness, doth rend and rest apart with eager strife, the link of wedded life. Let him be the witness, whose thought is not borne on light wings through the air, but abideth with knowledge, what thing was wrought by Althea's despair, for she, she marred the light grace of her son, with ill counsel rekindled the flame that was quenched as it glowed on the brand, what time from his mother he came, with the cry of a newborn child, and the brand from the burning she won, for the fates had foretold it evil in life and in death with her son. Ye, and man's hate tells of another, even Scylla of murderous guile, who slew for an enemy's sake her father, won over the wild, and the gifts of Cretan minnows, the gods of the high wrought gold, for she clipped from her father's head the lock that should never wax old, as she breathed in the silence of sleep, and knew not her craft and her crime. But Hermes, the guard of the dead, doth grasp her in fullness of time. And since the crimes of the cruel I tell, let my singing record the bitter wedlock and loveless, the curse on these halls outpoured, the crafty device of a woman, whereby did the chieftain fall, a warrior stern in his wrath, the fear of his enemies all, a song of dishonor untimely, and cold is the hearth that was warm, and ruled by the cowardly spear, the woman's unwomanly arm. But the summit and crown of all crimes is that which in Lemnos befell. A woe and a mourning it is, a shame and a spitting to tell. And he that in after time doth speak of his deadliest thought, doth say, It is like to do the deed that of old time in Lemnos was wrought, and loathed of men were the doers, and perished they and their seed. For the gods brought hate upon them. None loveth the impious deed. It is well of these tales to tell, for the sword in the grasp of right, right with a cleaving, a piercing blow to the innermost heart doth smite. And the deed unlawfully done is not trodden down, nor forgot, when the sinner outsteppeth the law, and heedeth the high God not. 
but justice hath planted the anvil and destiny forgeth the sword that shall smite in her chosen time by her is the child restored and darkly devising the fiend of the house world cursed will repay the price of the blood of the slain that was shed in the bygone day orestes and pylades enter in guise of travellers orestes knocks at the palace gate what ho slave ho i smite the palace gate in vain it seems what ho attend within once more attend come forth and ope the halls if yet agistus holds them hospitable a slave speaks from within anon anon he opens the door speak from what land art thou and sent from whom go tell to them who rule the palace halls since tis to them i come with tidings new delay not night's dark car is speeding on and time is now for wayfarers to cast anchor in haven wheresoever a house doth welcome strangers that there now come forth some one who holds authority within the queen or if some man more seemly were it for when man standeth face to face with man no stammering modesty confounds their speech but each to each doth tell his meaning clear clytemnestra enters speak on o strangers have ye need of aught here is what e'er beseems a house like this warm bath and bed tired nature's soft restorer and courteous eyes to greet you and if aught of graver import needeth act as well that as man's charge i to a man will tell a dolly in man am i from phosis bound and as with mine own travel script self-laden i went towards argos parting hitherward with travelling foot there did encounter me one whom I knew not, and who knew not me, but asked my purposed way, nor hid his own, and as we talked together told his name, Strophius of Phosis. Then he said, Good sir, since in all case thou art to Argos bound, forget not this my message, heed it well. Tell to his own, Orestes is no more, and whatsoever his kinfolk shall resolve, whether to bear his dust unto his home, or lay him here in death as erst in life exiled for i a child of banishment bring me their hest upon thy backward road for now in brazen compass of an urn his ashes lie their dues of weeping paid so much i heard and so much tell to thee not knowing if i speak unto his kin who rule his home but well i deem it were such news should earliest reach a parent's ear ah woe is me thy word our ruin tells from roof-tree unto base are we despoiled o thou whom never more we wrestle down thou fury of this home how oft and oft thou dost descry what far aloof is laid yea from afar dost bend the unerring bow and rendest from my wretchedness its friends as now orestes who a brief while since safe from the mire of death stood warily was the home's hope to cure the exulting wrong now thou ordainest let the ill abide to host and hostess thus with fortune blessed lief had i come with better news to bear unto your greeting and acquaintanceship for what good will lies deeper than the bond of guest and host and wrong abhorred it were as will i deem if i who pledged my faith to one and greetings from the other had bore not aright the tidings twixt the twain whate'er thy news thou shalt not welcome lack meet and deserved nor scant our grace shall be hadst them thyself not come such tale to tell another sure had borne it to our ears but lo the hour is here when travelling guests fresh from the day-long labour of the road should win their rightful due take him within to the man-chamber's hospitable rest him and these fellow-farers at his side give them such guest right as beseems our halls i bid thee do as thou shalt answer for it and i unto the prince who rules our home will tell the tale and since we lack not friends with them will counsel how this hap to bear clytemnestra exits so be it done sister servants when draws nigh time for us, for us aloud to, to cry, cry aristes and his victory o holy earth and holy tomb o'er the grave pit heaped on high where low doth agamemnon lie the king of ships the army's lord now is the hour give ear and come for now doth craft 
her aid afford, and Hermes, guard of shades in hell, stands over their strife to sentinel the dooming of the sword. I wot the stranger worketh woe within, for lo, I see come forth, suffused with tears, Aristes' nurse. What ho, Kilisa? Thou beyond, beyond the, the doors? doors? Where goest thou? Methinks some grief unbidden walketh at thy side. Enter Kilissa, a nurse. My mistress bids me, with what speed I may, call in Aegisthus to the stranger guests, that he may come, and standing face to face, a man with men may thus more clearly learn this rumour new. Thus speaking to her slaves, she hid beneath the glance of fictive grief laughter for what is wrought to her desire too well. But ill, ill, ill besets the house, brought by the tale these guests have told so clear. And he, God wot, will gladden all his heart hearing this rumour. Woe, and well a day! The bitter mingled cup of ancient woes, hard to be borne, that here in Atreus's house befell, was grievous to mine inmost heart. But never yet did I endure such pain. All else I bore with set soul patiently. But now, alack, alack, Orestes, dear, the day and night-long travail of my soul, whom from his mother's womb a new-born child I clasped and cherished. Many a time and oft toilsome and profitless my service was, when his shrill outcry called me from my couch. For the young child, before the sense is born, hath but a dumb thing's life, must needs be nursed as its own nature bids. The swaddled thing hath naught of speech, whate'er discomfort come, hunger or thirst or lower weakling need, for the babe's stomach works its own relief. Which knowing well before, yet oft surprised, t'was mine to cleanse the swaddling clothes. Poor I was nurse to tend, and fuller to make white, two works in one, two handicrafts I took, when in mine arms the father laid the boy. And now he's dead. Alack, and well a day! Yet must I go to him whose wrongful power pollutes this house, fair tidings these to him. Say then, with what array she bids him come? What sayest thou? Speak more clearly for mine ear. Bids she bring henchmen, or to come alone? She bids him bring a spear-armed bodyguard. Nay, tell not that unto our loathed lord, but speed to him, put on the mien of joy. Say, come along, fear not, the news is good. A bearer can tell straight a twisted tale. Does then thy mind in this new tale find joy? But what if Zeus bid our, our ill wind veer to fair? And how the home's hope with Orestes dies? Not yet a seer, though feeble, this might see. What sayest thou? Knowst thou aught this tale belying? Go, Go tell the news to him, perform thine hest. What, what the, the gods will, themselves can well provide. Well, I will go, herein obeying thee, and luck fall fair with favour sent from heaven. Kilissa exits. Zeus, sire of them, who on Olympus dwell, Hear thou, O hear my prayer, Grant to my rightful lords to prosper well, Even as their zeal is fair. For right, for right, goes up aloud my cry. Zeus, aid him, stand an eye, into his father's hall he goes, to smite his father's foes. Bid him prevail, by thee, on throne of triumph set. Twice, ye, thrice, with joy, shall he acquit the debt. But think thee, the young steed, the orphan foal, of sire beloved by thee, unto the car of doom is harnessed fast. Guide him aright, plant firm a lasting goal. Speed thou his pace, O, oh, that no chance may mar the homeward course, the last. 
and ye who dwell within the inner chamber, where shines the storied joy of gold, gods of one heart, O oh, hear ye, and remember, up and avenge the blood shed forth of old with sudden rightful blow, then let, let the old curse die, nor be renewed with progeny of blood. Once, Once more, more and, and not again, again be latter guilt laid low. O thou who dwells in Delphi's mighty cave, grant us to see this home once more restored unto its rightful Lord. Let it look forth from bills of death with joyous eye unto the dawning light of liberty. And Hermes, Maya's child, lend hand to save, willing the right and guide our state with fortune's breeze adown the favoring tide. Whatever in darkness hidden lies. He utters at his will. He at his will throws darkness on our eye. By night and each by day inscrutable. Then, then shall wealth atone the ills that here were done. Then, then will we unbind Fling free on wafting wind of joy, the woman's voice that willeth now, in piercing accents for a chief laid low, and this our song shall be. Hail to the commonwealth restored, hail to the freedom won to me, all hail, for doom has passed from him, my well-loved Lord. And, and thou, O child, when, when time and chance agree, Up to the deed that for thy sire is done, And if, if she will unto thee, spare, O son, Cry, aid, O father, and achieve the deed. The horror of man's tongue, the God's great need, Hold in thy breast such heart, as Perseus had, the bitter woe worked forth. Appease the summons of the dead, the wrath of friends on earth. Ye, set within a sign of blood and doom, and do to utter death him that pollutes thy home. Agus thus enters. Hither and not unsummoned have I come, for a new rumour borne by stranger men arriving hither hath attained mine ears of hap unwished for evil orestes death this were new sorrow a blood bolted load laid on the house that doth already bow beneath a former wound that festers deep dare i opine these words have truth and life or are they tales of woman's terror born that fly in the void air and die disproved canst thou tell aught and prove it to my soul what we have heard we heard go thou within thyself to ask the strangers of their tale strengthless are tidings through another herd question is his to whom the tell is brought i too will meet and test the messenger whether himself stood witness of the death, or tells it merely from dim rumour learnt. None shall cheat me, whose soul hath watchful eyes. Aegisthus exits. Zeus, Zeus, what word to me is given? What cry or prayer, invoking heaven, shall first by me be uttered? What speech or craft, nor all revealing, nor all too warily concealing, and in my speech shall aid the deed. For lo, in readiness is laid the dark emprise, the rending blade. Blood-dropping daggers shall achieve the dateless doom of Atreus' name, or 
kindling torch and joyful flame in sign of new-won liberty once more orestes shall retrieve his father's wealth and throned on high shall hold the city's fuel tree so mighty is the grasp whereby heaven holpen he shall trip and throw unseconded a double foe ho for the victory a loud cry is heard from within help help alas ho there ho how is within is done is it over stand we here aloof while it is rot that guiltless we may seem of this dark deed with death is strife fulfilled a slave enters o oh, woe o oh, woe my lord is done to death woe woe and woe again agesthus is gone hasten fling wide the doors unloose the bolts of the queen's chamber oh for some young strength to match the need but aid availeth naught to him laid low for ever help 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 sure to deaf ears i shout and call in vain to slumber ineffectual what ho the queen how fareth clytemnestra's self her neck too hers is close upon the steel and soon shall sink hewn through as justice wills Clytemnestra enters. What ails thee, raising this ado for us? I say the dead are come to slay the living. Alack, I read thy riddles all too clear. We slew by craft, and by like craft shall die. Swift, bring the axe that slew my lord of old. I'll know anon, or death or victory. So stands the curse, so I confront it here. Orestes enters, his sword dripping with blood. Thee too I seek, for him what's done will serve. Woe, woe, Aegisthus, spouse and champion slain. What, lov'st the man? Then in his grave lie down. Be his in death, desert him never more. Stay, child, and fear to strike. O son, this breast pillowed thine head full oft, while drowsed with sleep thy toothless mouth drew mother's milk from me. Can I my mother spare? Speak, Pylades. Where then would fall the hest Apollo gave at Delphi? with a solemn compact sworn choose thou the hate of all men not of gods thou dost prevail i hold thy counsel good orestes addresses clytemnestra follow i will slay thee at his side with him whom in his life thou lovest more than agamemnon sleep in death the mead for hate were love and love where hate was due i nursed thee young must i forego mine eld thou slewst my father shalt thou dwell with me fate bore a share in these things o my child fate also doth provide this doom for thee beware o my child a parent's dying curse a parent who did cast me out to ill not cast thee out but to a friendly home born free i was by twofold bargain soul where then the price that i received for thee the price of shame i taunt thee not more plainly nay but recount thy father's lewdness too home-keeping chide not him who toils without tis hard for wives to live as widows child the absent husband toils for them at home thou growest fain to slay thy mother child nay tis thyself wilt slay thyself not i beware thy mother's vengeful hounds from hell how shall i scape my father's sparing thee living i cry as to a tomb unheard my father's fate ordains this doom for thee ah me this snake it was i bore and nursed ay right prophetic was thy visioned fear shameful thy deed was die the death of shame orestes exits driving clytemnestra before him lo even for these i mourn a double death yet since orestes driven on by doom thus crowns the height of murders manifold i say tis well that not in night and death should sink the eye and light of this our home there came on priam's race and name a vengeance though it tarried long with heavy doom it came came too on agamemnon's hall a lion pair twin swordsmen strong 
and at last the heritage doth fall to him to whom from Pythian cave the god his deepest counsel gave. Cry out, rejoice, our kingly hall hath escaped from ruin. Never again its ancient wealth be wasted all by two usurpers, sin defiled, an evil path of woe and bane. On him who dealt the dastard blow comes craft, revengeous, scheming child, and hand in hand with him doth go, eager for fight, the child of Zeus, who men below call justice, naming her aright, and on her foes her breath is as the blast of death. For her, the god who dwells in deep recess beneath Parnassus' brow, summons with loud acclaim to rise, though late and lame, and come with craft that worketh righteousness. For even over powers divine this law is strong, thou shalt not serve the wrong. To that which ruleth heaven beseems it that we bow. Lo, freedom's light hath come, Lo, now is rent away, The grim and curving bit that held us dumb. Up to the light ye hauls, This many a day too low on earth ye lay, And time, the great accomplisher, Shall cross the threshold, Whensoever he choose with purging hand To cleanse the palace driving all pollution thence. And fair, the cast of fortunes die, before our state's new lords shall lie, not as of old, but bringing fairer doom. Lo, freedom's light hath come. The scene opens, disclosing Orestes standing over the corpses of Aegisthus and Clytemnestra. In one hand he holds his sword, in the other, the robe in which Agamemnon was entangled and slain. There lies our country's twofold tyranny, my father's slayers, spoilers of my home. Erst were they royal, sitting on the throne, and loving are they yet. Their common fate tells the tale truly, shows their troth plight firm. They swore to work mine ill-starred father's death. They swore to die together. Tis fulfilled. O ye who stand, this great doom's witnesses, behold this too, the dark device which bound my sire unhappy to his death. Behold the mesh which trapped his hands and wound his feet. Stand round, unfold it, tis the trammel net that wrapped a chieftain. Holds it that he see the father, not my sire, but he whose eye is judge of all things, the all-seeing son. Let him behold my mother's damned deed, then let him stand, when need shall be to me, witness that justly I have sought and slain my mother. Blameless was Aegisthus' doom, he died the death law bids adulterers die. But she who plotted this accursed thing to slay her lord, by whom she bare beneath her girdle once the burden of her babes, beloved erewhile, now turned to hateful foes, what deem ye of her? Or what venomed thing, sea snake or adder, had more power than she to poison with a touch the flesh unscarred? So great her daring, such her impious will. How name her if I may not speak a curse? A lion springe, a laver swathing cloth, wrapping a dead man, twining round his feet, a net, a trammel, an entangling robe. Such were the weapon of some strangling thief. The terror of the road, a cup-purse hound, With such device full many might he kill, Full oft exultant heat of villainy. Ne'er have my house so cursed an indweller. Heaven send me, rather, childless to be slain. Woe for each desperate deed! Woe for the queen 
with shame of life bereft and ah for him who still is left madness dark blossom of a bloody seed did she the deed or not this robe gives proof and brood with blood that bathed Agistha's sword look how the spurted stain combines with time to blur the many dyes that once adorned its pattern manifold i now stand here made glad made sad with blood exulting wailing here o thou woven web that slew my sire i grieve for deed and death in all my home victor pollution's damned stain for prize alas that none of mortal, mortal men can pass his life untouched by pain behold one woe is here another lumineth near hark ye and learn for what the end shall be for me i know not breaking from the curb my spirit whirls me off a conquered prey borne as a charioteer by steeds distraught far from the course and madness in my breast burneth to chant its song and leap and rave hark ye and learn my friends ere my reason goes i say that rightfully i slew my mother a thing god scorned that foully slew my sire and chiefest wizard of the spell that bound me unto this deed i named the pythian seer apollo who foretold that if i slew the guilt of murder done should pass from me but if i spared the fate that should be mine i dare not blazon forth the bow of speech can reach not to the mark that doom to tell and now behold me how with branch and crown i pass a suppliant made meet to go unto earth's midmost shrine the holy ground of loxias in that renowned light of ever-burning fire to scape the doom of kindred murder to no other shrine so loxias bade may i for refuge turn bear witness argives in the after time how came on me this dread fatality living i pass a banished wanderer hence to leave in death the memory of this cry nay but the deed is well, well. link not thy lips to speech ill-starred nor vent ill-boding words who hast to argos her full freedom given lopping two serpents heads with timely blow look look alas handmaidens see what gorgon shapes throng up dusky their robes and all their hair unwound snakes coiled with snakes off off i must away most loyal of all sons unto thy sire what visions thus distract thee hold abide great was thy victory and shalt thou fear these are no dreams void shapes of haunting ill but clear to sight my mother's hell-hounds come nay the fresh bloodshed still embrues thine hands and thence destruction sinks into thy soul o king apollo see they swarm and throng black blood of hatred dripping from their eyes one remedy thou hast go touch the shrine of loxias and rid thee of these woes ye can behold them not but i behold them up and away i dare abide no more orestes exits farewell then as thou mayst the god thy friend guard thee and aid which chances favouring behold the storm of woe divine, woe divine that with raves and beats on atris line its great third blast hath blown first was thyestes loathly woe the rueful feast of long ago on children's flesh unknown and next the kingly chief's despite when he who led the greeks to fight was in the bath hewn down and now the offspring of the race stands in the third the saviour's place to save or to consume o oh, whither ere it be fulfilled ere its fierce blast be hushed and stilled shall blow the wind of doom all exit end of the libation bearers end of section four